the problem is that you know we talk a lot about theory but we don't look at the arts as a pedagogical tool i think that is where we are going wrong i think arts elevates you uh, within yourself to be a better person i i think because when the child comes back they're equally curious about other aspects that maybe they're not studying in school there would be students there will be children there will be uh, who would have interest in a performing art but you're also developing a life skill just because i learn first aid does not really mean i want to become a doctor or a nurse but when it comes to dance i'm very fascinated by uh, the mathematics that goes into it because in my head it forms as patterns so the calculations exist but it it looks like geometrical forms and that's so visual for me this session ought to have been there's a rule in uh, when you write it's the thumb rule whether you write fiction non fiction or whether you write a picture book or children's books which is show don't tell now if we're having a session on the arts and theater and music and visual arts we ought to be doing these things right or showing these things and not telling what do you think anak <laughs> no absolutely i think we should be uh, showing a lot and uh, uh, it would add a lot of uh, sense to probably next time we'll plan a session of exactly. the performing arts exactly yeah well. what we plan to make this is a conversation between three people um, i've known radhe for a really long time and i've known kanak kanak for a really short time <laughs> and radhe and kanak don't know each other so this is a great drawing room conversation and all of you are privy to our conversation but you are also asked or encouraged to participate in the conversation so if at any point uh, we are not going to wait till the end for you to raise your hand and ask a question please feel free to kind of weigh in or comment or converse with us yeah so radhe and kanak for both of you i just wanted to kind of brief you on what happened yesterday and all of today until now is largely the group of people gathered here uh, and the panelists who spoke we uh, talked and discoursed on several things one very important thing was what was the purpose of education okay and of course we got a lot of answers for the purpose of education and i what i took away from it my reason was the purpose of education was to make a really um responsible human being i would think that was my take away there's all the reading and the writing and the math and the way to be uh, taught and learning and all of that now i know um i know about your schooling and i know about your uh, graduation that you went to um cape high in rishi valley and then you went to kalakshetra to uh, graduate in bharatnatyam and uh, radhe right now heads or coordinates um uh, isha samskriti a school a school that is so different that puts arts first so my question to you first and it's not even a question it's something that i'm keen on uh, on really understanding is is this even possible and tell us a little bit about isha samskriti namaskaram i i don't lead isha samskriti i help coordinate many aspects of isha samskriti and uh, the reason i i got into it is like she's mentioned my background in um, a slightly alternative school of education like rishi valley or like jiddu krishna murthy had established at that time and then i went from there to kalakshetra which is also very heavily influenced by theosophical society and ani besant and in many ways they are people who influenced education across south india if not all of india and at a very crucial time during independence when Mm, at least to a certain extent people were relooking at education or the purpose of education in some sense um i also 
left school in 10th standard, which is, which is also slightly unusual, I think. And uh, I went to a college that taught Bharatanatyam full time. And I was not one of those children that wanted to be a dancer. I wasn't fascinated by dance. I just, I fell in love with the campus and I thought, you know, if I don't have to write exams, and if I can do something, learn a, learn a skill, not, not really a skill, but to explore something that uh, was more than, I wasn't reading about somebody else doing something. I would have to do it myself to learn about it. And that's really how Kalakshetra happened for me. Um, and um, so because of that background, I got into Isha Samskriti and started to help out because I had a slightly different form of education than maybe the other people who are coordinating Isha Samskriti and the influence that they have. Um, it's, it's very interesting to see that the, it's the adults who visit from outside. It's not the parents of the students and it's not the parents uh, and it's not the students themselves who feel like they're missing out on a different type of education. It's only the guests that arrive who have uh, maybe children in a different form of education. But the parents, once they've put them there, I think because when the child comes back, they're equally curious about other aspects that maybe they're not studying in school. Uh, we teach classical dance, music, yoga, kalari paita as the main subjects. They learn English and Sanskrit and mathematics as uh, secondary subjects. And then all the other subjects are given to them in the forms of workshops. So they don't really fully explore say, physics or chemistry. But um, the curiosity that they have and the kind of questions they go back home with to the work that their parents are maybe doing in various fields is, uh, is something that we encourage and is something that they have managed to keep even as they become teenagers or as they're graduating. So they may not be well versed in, say, chemistry, but if their father or mother or uncle is involved in um, a discipline that is oriented towards the sciences, they're equally curious about that as they are about their music training or their dance training. So uh, we're not, in terms of knowledge, I think they're very curious, but in terms of information, maybe they're not uh, at the place where other students are. Shobhaji, very interestingly, Radhe talks about two, two things which I think are very important. One is curiosity. I think, you know, the ability to ask questions, to be curious about something is some, is, is I wouldn't say a skill, but uh, uh, it is definitely a character trait that you want children, you want uh, uh, adults to have. So I'm so glad that you're focusing on that. Uh, the other aspect which I thought is very interesting, when you said that, you know, there are no subjects, etc. I'm so glad that you're trying to do the basics right. Uh, I think that is very, very important. Now, you know, all of us as educators, you know, um, I, I run some schools uh, and uh, uh, we always uh, talk very passionately about uh, 21st century skills. And what are these 21st century skills? Decision making, team building, collaboration, uh, leadership. I think, you know, if you get those basics right, ultimately figuring out uh, physics, chemistry and God forbid in today's world, coding and robotics, etc. is much simpler because you know how to analyze, you know how to anticipate, you know how to be predictive. So I'm so glad that you're doing that, Radhe. So, but Kanek, do you think all arts lend themselves to these, uh, these skills? Uh, does theater does? I know you work, uh, I know you run a theatrician which uh, works with a lot of schools uh, and with a lot of adults, children and adults with theater. Um, and uh, have you seen this happening with the children? <laughs> So, uh, yes, you know, I, I run a theater group, which I founded in, in, when I was in school, uh, Shobhaji, and uh, uh, it is now considered one of the most prolific English theater groups uh, uh, in the country. We perform about six plays every year. More importantly, I believe that, you know, a lot that I have learned is because of theater. A lot of that I'm able to do is because of theater. A shy kid, dyslexic, like it was a prototype for going into, you know, the sciences, etc. as they say, stereotypically, and, you know, I say stereotypically because it's fairly wrong. Uh, theater helped me communicate, theater helped me collaborate. Now, think about, again, I'm coming back to the 21st century skills, <laughs> agility. Uh, if you're acting on stage and your co-actor forgets a line, I promise you, nothing makes you more agile. Uh, nothing will give you more uh, presence than that. So theater does that when you work day in, day out, with someone, uh, you're creating something, you're putting a performance up on stage, you are collaborating, 
you are uh, being empathetic because I think the previous session I loved it that uh, the speakers were talking about uh, getting into the skin of the character. Uh, so you develop empathy, not just for your fellow uh, actors or co-actors, but also for the character whom you've just read about. You don't really know the character and you're developing it in your mind. I think that's very, very interesting as well. Yeah, but do you think and um, with Isha Samskriti, it's a residential school. And, uh, and we've been talking over the past two days uh, about, uh, you know, if only we could have a seamless kind of a space in education where all subjects are not demarcated by 40 minute periods that uh, a bell doesn't have to ring if you're in the middle of a fabulous poem and close your book because now you have to move to math, but you just stay with it as long as you learn and with theater or music or dance or any form of even painting or uh, uh, it requires that. And so therefore, either of you can, you know, help me with this. And uh, is this a practical thing to do though? I mean, would we be able to take an Isha Samskriti to any of the schools over here? I mean, would it be, uh, would you be able to do it in Jaipuria schools? So, uh, uh, Shobhaji, you know, I think we all get very scared uh, <laughs> with taking the first step. And, and we believe, we all talk about it at conferences, we talk about it in closed rooms that as to how important it is to change the pattern, to right. not have a pattern, to actually give freedom to, to teachers and to students uh, to upskill. And you know, it's important to have these discussions. I think time has come for us to recognize that we need to put it in action. Uh, I, I don't think that the change can happen overnight. Five but years, five years this. Five years, they said. <laughs> but five years is also a fairly long time. I think, you know, you need to start working towards it now for it to happen in the next, say, two, three years uh, for the change to happen. Yeah. What do you think, Radhe? I think we spoke about it very briefly, but uh, it's difficult to maybe bring a completely arts education-oriented system to, say, mainstream education because um, there are roles that we play in society and we can't expect everybody to be a writer or everybody to be a dancer. We do, and, and children do have interest in technical skills. Children do sure. have interest in pure sciences. Sure. And uh, I think especially, sorry, especially when we're talking to educators who are probably math teachers and science teachers. Um, I mean, you may be principals now, but at some point you must have been yeah. teaching some subject, right? And um, there are children who really thrive in this structured, disciplined form of education. So where do we find that balance between um, an arts or an arts or the skills that arts education can give to a person and for them to become people and not worry about, and I think this is something that happens more and more, at least with dance, if not with other subjects, is that you want the child to learn something so that on the annual day they can perform it and you can, you know, say, oh, you know, they, they did a play, or they learn how to memorize a dialogue or a soliloquy and yeah. present it. But it's always about pushing them to present it for somebody else to say that, you know, okay, we've yeah. done this activity and this activity. As opposed to just learning the skill of how to present something and uh, really be bad at it initially, <laughs> like just be terrible. Yeah. And um, with these kind of skills that are physical in nature, um, the improvement I think that you see from the first time you do it to at the end of the month is such an obvious improvement um, that you see it yourself, which maybe at least for me, I was terrible at math. And I may have been improving year on year, but I never saw it because I was always terrible. Um, at least in my class, I was always bad at it. But when it came to um, anything that was slightly more creative or slightly more um, but that's out of the not box. Uh, totally true. Yesterday, if you had sat on the session of Sri Ram and Anu, uh, dance requires talam, right? And talam is... Which I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> when I started learning Which dance. No, and that... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, um, I agree with you that, uh, that if we take to the arts for just the joy of the art, because I, I learn to sing because singing gives me joy. And here I'm just going to reveal something uh, slightly personal. Uh, 
we all know yesterday that Vishnath is Sri Ram's brother, and Vishnath is also a classical musician who has given very many concerts. He hasn't given, uh, I mean, ever since Karadi took up his life, <laughs> he's not had the time or the space to devote so much to music. But every morning, just like we all get up to brush our teeth, he will sit to sing. It's not that he's singing for a performance or to, it's just his sadhana. He just sings it and I can see how this, he's a far more balanced person than I am and I wish I had music and, I mean, I'd learned music. And I think this gives it to people, you know. I think arts elevates you uh, within yourself to be a, better person, I think. What do you think, sure. Anak? Uh, Shobhachi, uh, before I lose my chain of thought, I have a question linked to what uh, Radhe had said, and uh, for both of you, actually. So she's, she spoke about uh, uh, making mistakes. Uh, you know, as a news, you would have made mistakes on stage, and you know, there is, at times, not, you, you cannot go back on those mistakes. You go on to the next performance. Uh, as a visual arts uh, professional, you would have made uh, mistakes with, with a lot of representation. Do you think that the arts also gives a very important life skill, which is how to deal with failure? I think what uh, arts entered into my life, one, when I got married, and two, when I started creating books for children, picture books for children. And with picture books, I had to work with so many artists and illustrators. And it really, really changed my uh, aesthetics, uh, both oral aesthetics as well as visual aesthetics, because I learned so much from it. I learned color and balance. And, uh, and much later, it reflected in so many things that I did, probably in the way I dressed, probably in the way I kept my home. And uh, when people come and tell me that you have a beautiful home, and have you learned interior design? I say no, I think it's just Karadi, which probably has given me this opportunity because I work with artists. So we don't know really, uh, Kanak, uh, where we find these expressions of art that whether we learn or whether we engage with or whether we involve ourselves with help us in our lives. I think it's, but my, the question, I know you can answer him, but what I really wanted to ask is that for all of us, when we went to school, at least I did, the drawing period was once in a week. I went to a school that had a music class, but that was once in a week. And there was no theater. And the drawings were all like, if, if it goes on even today, if you ask a child, to draw a scenery. They will draw pointed mountains with a sun setting a coconut tree and a river flowing, you know? And, and that's the only, and the art class, I don't know when we stop having drawing and art in school, I'm not sure. But if arts, if the arts hold so much meaning in our lives, and I know how it's transformed you, Radhe. Why is it that we cannot have it occupy a more central space in our schools and curriculum. What's more ironic is that now that we talk about coding, and now when we talk about design thinking, computational thinking, all the, all the uh, tools that we use in management, we talk about as to how you can visually represent it better, and with colors, with lines, with shapes, right. it's really ironic that, you know, uh, at the school levels, we diss on the arts, uh, at the school level, we don't, you don't have a theater uh, class, but uh, uh, teaching is a performing art. You need to engage, you need to have dialogues, conversations with your audience. And it's just ironic that we don't think about uh, uh, these things. I feel, Shobhaji, the problem is that, you know, we talk a lot about theory, but we don't look at the arts as a pedagogical tool. I think that is where we are going wrong because we always talk about degrees, we talk about diplomas, we talk about what's happened in the past. Uh, with all due respect, every time someone talks to me about theater, the first thing I hear is that in sooth I know not why I'm so sad. And I'm like, okay, you know, there is theater beyond Shakespeare and there is a lot of skills that theater brings besides Shakespeare as well. So I think we need to look at it as a pedagogical tool, not just 
as a theory, not just as history, uh, which is very interesting, but we need to move out of that. Yeah. Radhe? Um, kind of uh, little patches from everything that you've said so far. One is I did not know that there was math involved in dance. I would not have jumped into it so willingly. <laughs> but having said that, I really enjoy math in dance now, which I would never have, I honestly, outside of addition and subtraction, nothing else made sense to me. But when it comes to dance, I'm very fascinated by uh, the mathematics that goes into it because in my head it forms as patterns. So the calculations exist, but it, it looks like geometrical forms. And that's so visual for me. And I, um, and when, when you study art, which my school had more than one hour of <laughs> art class a week, but when you study art, um, they don't tell you about the geometry of, like where you naturally place things, like if you're doing still life or plant life, because you have to still pass your exam. Um, the, the natural geometry of why a painting looks good when one student does it and when the other doesn't, is um, so much a question of uh, visual art and geometry and all of it together and that kind of ties back to how I keep my house or how I wear my clothes or what kind of pattern I pick um, for a tablecloth. I mean, anything really. But nuances of artistic um, interest or artistic abilities it's not limited to then when I have a career, is it a creative career yeah. or is that the direction I'm going in? Uh, like you mentioned Vishana practices and I've been fortunate to be in your house many, many times when he wakes up and practices and would make us practice also along with him. Um, but to then also have an artist who, uh, and I think you said yesterday with Anuradha and Sriram, there are examples of people like this who are fully creative in terms of what they do, but would like to do math on the side, or would like to do chemistry on the side. That once you're done with your 12th standard education, the subject that you have chosen is not now forever the sentence that you live with for the rest of your life. Because if you have had these experiences of uh, giving value to your painting class, or your dance class, or your math class, or your chemistry class, that you can come back to those interests at a much at a much later stage in your life, just for interest, just to be able to do something that makes your mind function a certain way or make your body function a certain way. Uh, you know, the other thing is that the previous panelists spoke about, I know Preetika started it with, uh, that the greatest concern uh, amongst the people gathered here today was the mental health of their children. And uh, there is no one recommendation. Reading was a recommendation that it would get you out of depression. But I feel the greater answer lies in the arts. And we don't, uh, the arts, all the people who are performing artists today or who have taken up either visual art or dance or music or even theater, they have done that outside of school, like Sriram was mentioning. And given that this is uh, formed careers and made a difference in people's life and definitely could contribute to the mental health of her children, my question again is, and because I don't run a school, I would like any of you to answer this, that why is it, I hate to use the word stepmotherly treatment, but for lack of a better word, why would you not give it equal emphasis to everything else. Anybody in the audience would like to take up this question and answer it? In our schools, we have, uh, we have introduced art, especially in the primary classes. We try and integrate it with the other subjects. This is an effort that we are making. So I will not say we have arrived, but yet the effort is there, the initiative is there, the awareness among the teachers exists, and the attempt to try and integrate is, yeah, is, is a part of what we are trying to achieve in our schools. Yes, having said that, not everybody is doing it because I think we are still stuck to the old ways of doing things. And it's uh, movement in education is very, very slow. You need to take an entire community of people along with you, the parents, the children, the teachers, the management. And the poor principal is stuck with all these priorities, right? And in the end, uh, after a while, the principal herself is not there in the school. 
in some cases. So uh, I say that it is, it is not because they don't want it. It is because I think it's a lot of effort to start doing it. Perhaps standalone schools, some of them are, I can see, I can, I can remember some of the schools doing it. Yes, in our schools we do try. We have been putting in a lot of conscious effort to integrate. In the primary classes, I can say. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, Shobachi, you'll also need to look at it as a life skill, not just simply as a career option. Just because right. I think uh, uh, if Radhe is interested in dance, doesn't really mean that you know she wants to only be at the news. There would be students, there will be children, there will be uh, who would have interest in a performing art, but you're also developing a life skill. Right. Just because I learn first aid does not really mean I want to become a doctor or a nurse. You know, that's a basic life skill. Just because I want to learn how to drive a car does not necessarily mean that I want to, you know, start my business in Uber Ola or do F1 races. It's important for me to understand that performing arts give you a lot of life skills that you can utilize in your area of interest as well. And we need to integrate that into the functioning of our schools. And not just, you know, you said that, you know, the, uh, there's one art period during the week that we'd have. And you need to integrate a lot of it into the classrooms beyond uh, just doing it as one period. I think uh, uh, this morning I was talking to Professor Bala Subramaniam and we were talking about art integrated learning. And he said the same thing. He said that, you know, he said remove everything, just bring humor into the classrooms and everything else is going to fall in place. How do you bring in that humor? Probably performing arts is the answer. But I also um, am curious as to how much this is, um, for as long as you're in school, physically children are active. Whether you want them to be or not, they're always, you know, kind of on the move. But at some point, at some age, um, and I don't know if this is when they're 13, 14 and everything is changing, but at some point, the, the need for physical activity, and I don't just mean sport, but even theater or dance, or um, just being able to use your body to express something is something that goes away. Right. Um, I agree. And I do think that a lot of uh, mental health issues for younger children tends to be, they have so much energy, but don't have the intention to use it. Um, it's, you know, you, if you can play, and I do play video games, I have nothing against them, I, they're a lot of fun. But when you play video games, the, the joy of it is that you, you mentally, you get all the excitement of going out and playing a game or being in a certain situation and trying to puzzle through something without the physical exertion of it. So you can do it endlessly because you're sitting in one place. But you also don't uh, physically experience the reward of having... Um, accomplish something, whether it's running somewhere or climbing a tree or reading, I mean, you know, whatever yeah. the activity. Actually, I was going to mention that. In fact, I put it down in my notes that uh, we didn't have any panel that discussed that, actually, the relevance and importance of sport, you know, that uh, being able to physically engage. And that also goes away, you know, only the people who... Uh, run, uh, win races, or go on to make it to higher. While theater, while arts also allows you to do that, like dance does. It's a different kind of physical movement and involvement. But because, um, and I think that maybe mental health problems stem from that as well, that you don't have any place to release that energy or find an outlet. Shivaji, also I think, you know, when you talk about learning theories, you know, you talk about visual, verbal, oral, Physical. I think this physical is a very important aspect, which sometimes gets negated, uh, which should not be as well. Uh, I think that, you know, the learning part will always be taken care of. Uh, that's the smaller bit of the puzzle. Is the social skills, the emotional learning, that gets compromised a lot. And that's when we need to understand uh, the people that we are working with, the emotions that we are working with development of empathy is going to be the cornerstone of everything that we do yeah. as a society as we progress. We're talking about raising learners for India 2040. Yeah. We are essentially talking about a future that clearly has not been imagined yet. Yeah. It's still in the works. We are talking about companies that have still not been created. We're talking about professions that we do not know of. We really need to focus on skills. We need to focus on decision making. We need to focus on collaboration. We need to focus on empathy. These are the important aspects of it. 
Yes. I have a question for yes. you. For me? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, I, was uh, I was reading a report recently, and the American Center for Education talks about that any child who is exposed to visual arts mm. has four times more chances of succeeding in life than a child who does not. Firstly, you know, do you agree with, you know, with, with uh, the kind of statistics that they've put out? And secondly, is there some, some study, something that we have in India for it as well? I don't know, Kanaka. I don't know about this, uh, this study. And I myself was not exposed to any visual art uh, when I was young. I, I was exposed to it or introduced to it much later in my life as an adult. And maybe I'm four times as successful as any other adult. <laughs> I don't know. But I can believe that. I mean, not just with visual arts. I think I would, I would say that with all art. You know? What do you say, Rad? I think, um, and uh, this is an interesting question, I think, for you and maybe for Vishana, is uh, we talk about arts ed education because, and I don't want to speak for you, so I talk about arts and education because it has been a big part of my life. And a large part of it was choiceless. Um, and a lot of it, I wasn't really aware that anybody was trying to educate me in the arts. I just would prefer to do this than do that, and I kind of just fell into a certain pattern. It's not that I was exposed to great artists all the time, but I was exposed to people who pay great attention to detail, whether, uh, whether it was writers, um, whether it was people who made you know, children's books, or people who were involved in architecture or uh, planning an organization or management or whatever it was. It was always about detail-oriented. Right. And I think that's something about Indian um, literature and stories that are so detail-oriented, and that's really was why I think I got involved with dance so much, because I was fascinated by the language that went around it. But when you... But when I do that, it's, it's my imagination, and there's no pattern for me to follow um, outside of my class. But when you think, when you take a story and you put a picture to it, um, what is the impact that it has in terms of learning? Because um, I, I, don't, I didn't read many picture books growing up. So everything that I imagined were, came from my head or everything that I thought of was a pattern that I had formed in my head. So how does that impact, let's say, language skills? Or how does that impact how quickly you pick up something you're unfamiliar with when you use visual Im somebody else's imagination? So the thing is, this is the, uh, this is the magic of the picture book. What happens in a picture book is, the pictures don't literally represent the text. The picture tells one story, and the text tells the other half of the story. So therefore, you have to glean the rest of the story from the picture. So for instance, if I say, Raju lived in... Raju liked to climb trees. Let's keep that. Now, that's the only sentence if we have. And I send it to the illustrator. The illustrator will contextualize everything else. Where the tree is placed, is it placed in front of my building? Or is it placed in a village? What kind of tree is it? Is it a mango tree, a neem tree, or whatever? And what kind? Is it a village? Is it, uh, is it a forest in the Sundarbans? Everything else has to be gleaned from the picture, while the text will only say, Raju likes to climb trees, you know? So that's the learning you get. So you don't give it all to them. Um, I just want to ask a question. Uh, sure. Rather, I would like to answer a question which was raised by the panel. Sure. Um, see, we are talking about uh, raising uh, learners for 2040. Right. We are identifying the outcomes and also the gaps which in the past uh, panel uh, discussion, insightful discussion, we could arrive at. One thing is, we have thousands of schools and then millions of children. We look at environment. Sir was mentioning about uh, uh, life skills. Why not arts, visual, or any performing arts, any art, as a career pathway? See, when we talk about uh, teaching art, where is the teacher? in a school. We talk about subject teachers, we talk about, because now we see that engineers becoming teachers, even doctors and other specialties coming into teaching, why not for arts, performing arts? We don't have that. 
unless we have people to integrate in a regular system, it is very difficult to, of course, we talk about integrating it in a classroom situation where teacher has to take up this uh, twice or thrice the fold and understanding and learn is slowly built with the opportunities, with the resources, with the environmental setup and exhibiting this in the curriculum or the time frame or the content and the relevancy and the choices we have in a school system. So with all this buts and ifs, we want to integrate. That is a very, very uh, 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 analytical way a leadership has to manage within a school limit. So there is a way many things happen in a school, how this has to be taken, it's not just one sentence, it is integration of arts, integration of visuals, but we have to lead them into a pathway where many students take up with interest, go into the society and prove themselves it is all successful and come back to the school. Unless we do this, we should recognize this into a, a proper streaming of a pathway, educational pathway. Thank you. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, sir. In fact, when I raised the question, I was thinking that would be the most obvious thing that the people here would say that where is the faculty, where are the teachers, where is the competence to train children or to teach children or to make it so much a part of the integrated curriculum. But like Kanak says, and you rightly said, that we are also talking about arts as tools of learning, you know, that that is probably easier to uh, bring in or integrate into the curriculum than pure arts as performance, dance performance, which you start from, I don't know, six years of age until the child is 18, right? So, Shobhaji, it also links back to, sir, I'm glad that you talked about career options, but I think as we progress, uh, you know, as our education system becomes a little more about going back to our roots, we need to understand that, you know, the measurability really needs to come out. We really need to come out of this aspect that there is an outcome-based education always. We always look at the outcome. So I think somewhere we need to integrate it holistically instead of just looking at it from an a outcome perspective. That's my only reservation to what you said, sir. I mean, there's, I, we discussed it briefly, but there are so many different problems to this. So it's not, uh, not that we're going to have a solution by 2040, but at least if we're thinking in that direction, um, the children who are influenced by that, maybe only when they become teachers or they're old enough to come back into school systems, um, will we have a more convincing arts education program that is integrated with the rest of the school as opposed to extracurricular activity. Um, Sorry, but what I was just going to say is that we don't have the pedagogy for it, and we've talked about this, is that we, each person's style of art is different. What I think is appropriate to teach is different from what she thinks is appropriate. The right way to teach it is different from the way she thinks it's different. And each student requires a different type of attention. You can't teach a student who's at this level something that you teach a student at this level, and they're not all going at the same age or the same pace. So it's... Uh, it's something that we're not going to have solutions for overnight, but if we're all working towards it in that direction, then it'll happen slowly. Uh, I had a question, but I think, Rade, you sort of answered it. Uh, I was able to resonate very well with almost everything that you spoke about and all of you spoke of. But, uh, you know, my question was, teaching pure arts is performing arts is something else from arts integration, right? You spoke of... Uh, you know, uh, the lack of, or there's a lacuna when it comes to arts integration. How do I use this as tool of learning as different from becoming a Bharatanatyam dancer myself? So maybe there is lack of expertise, that's one. And people who are talking about it today in, in many areas, you know, I, I uh, you know, have some principals here who are trying or who are making an effort to bring in arts in a bigger way into the curriculum, but is this being restricted to the niche and the elite? I mean, we have 80% of India studying in government schools. So how are we going to take the conversation there? I think for as long as human interaction is relevant, arts education is relevant. Because it's, uh, it's not about whether you become an expert at the subject, but are you able to relate to what you're trying to achieve? Um, and for as long as 
uh, us trying to form a bond or trying to break that bond is something that we experience as human beings. Arts education is something that will, will give them a way to, to express that or a way to understand it without having to go through it themselves. Right, if there are no other questions, thank you all very much. <laughs> Thanks, Kanak. Thank you, thank Radhe. You.